Hello, welcome back to I Say Our Wrong Reads and this is my March wrap up. So I read 18 books in March, um, which was quite good, um, but I don't want to make this video too long. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to speed run this wrap up and hopefully things will not be too chaotic, frankly. So first up, we've got 21 Lessons to Learn 21st Century by Yuval Noah Harari. And so basically this is a non-fiction book about um, certain, like, kind of 21 essays about what the future of the 21st century could be for us. Now it's quite a philosophical book, more than a, like a science based book, which I was expecting more science-y, but the, it definitely wasn't unwelcome. Uh, the philosophical bit and it did send me into an existential tailspin so we have that um, but other than that it definitely raised some questions and left me thinking about it for a while after it I gave this one four stars so after that I read Invisible Woman by Caroline Carrado Perez so this one was an interesting one because as, as much as it was information so much it was literally just long list of statistics about one thing or the other, uh, why women are more disadvantaged in society than men. However, I did feel that it lacked a lot of context around some of the statistics. So the author seemed to blame everything on the fact that people were women rather than other things such as poverty, racism, homophobia, transphobia, and that kind of thing, and definitely left out a lot of things that could be desired because of that. Um, so I do feel like it could have been expanded somewhat in the like intersectionality. Um, but other than that, it I gave it two stars, mainly because I did find it interesting, but I do feel it lacked quite a bit that could have been discussed further. Right, next up is The Strings of Murder by Oscar de Muriel. Now, this one is interesting. I gave it one star, but not because it was necessarily... I didn't... Mm, see, right, this has been difficult because it's set in Scotland, which I love books set in Scotland. I'm Scottish all for it however the main character was english and all he seemed to do was talk down to scottish people mock them say they were dirty disgusting poor and um, and then they tried to have like a bantery relationship between the main character and then the other detective that was there except it was just him insulting him it wasn't banter it was just insults constantly and then also the way that they wrote scottish accents were just god awful like it's definitely that's not how Scottish people speak although I must admit one saving grace was I really did like the character of his the English guy's partner he was definitely intriguing and his storyline was intriguing I just couldn't get over the constant barrage of like insults <laughs> and just wasn't it for me and then I read A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes and I loved it. I gave it five stars. I really, really love retellings of Greek mythology and I haven't really got into them as much as I would like to. Uh, I only really started reading Greek mythology stuff last year, even though I knew about it for a long time, mainly because it just wasn't really something that I picked up for some reason. But I really, really like this. I loved the way it was written. It was so creative. Um, it pulled at the heartstrings and it created such a vivid picture and painting that it was almost irresistible uh, to read constantly, you know. And then I listened to the audiobook of A Life on This Planet by David Attenborough, which I gave four stars. So this came out as a documentary last October because I remember I watched it on my birthday um, and I really enjoyed the documentary I thought it was beautifully shot and everything and this was pretty much the exact same as that except it was a bit more expanded upon and um, there was like a little bit of extra explanation going in a bit more depth than the TV book because it, the TV program was two hours long and I think this was four hours long so it kind of doubled that kind of memoir of David Attenborough and the kind of thing that he was going for and I really enjoyed it. So next up is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I also gave five stars. So this is my first time reading a book by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I wasn't sure what to expect. I know a lot of people really like these books but now I can see why and I kind of want to go and 
get some of her other books to see what they're like. Um, so this is essentially about a woman called Evelyn Hugel who had seven husbands over her lifetime and is now going for an interview with this random um, reporter that, that she's chosen to do that. And it so vividly paints the scene of Hollywood and that kind of career and the pain <laughs> that she feels. And it's just beautifully done and I would highly recommend this to anyone. So then I started with a classic, which eh, I did The Last of the Mohicans by J James Fenimore Cooper. So I gave this one two stars because this one was really quite odd for me reading it because it felt like they were using dodgy language, but like that it was kind of not dodgy at the same time. And I couldn't really make up my mind of what was quite going on there. I did, there was some bits that made me feel mm, not very great. Um, but and the story was a bit dull and it kind of dragged but I did get through it um, and it was very very dense as well like the language is very dense to get through when it's not being dodgy so yeah that's why I gave this one two stars. Uh, this one is essentially about two women trying to get across America to another point during the um, French war of 1750 in America or something like that, um, and um, Native American mythology and all that kind of thing. So I suppose for at a time it might have been revolutionary, but right now I just isn't really one that I would recommend. And then I listened to The Whispers in Darkness by H.P. Lovecraft um, and other stories from the source. This is a short story collection, basically is kind of some of the most, most famous tales. So I started reading this and I wasn't really understanding so much why they were so good. I really struggled with kind of understanding the tension that it was coming. I read, I really liked the violinist of exam, I think that's the name is. Um, and that was good, but I still wasn't really finding the atmosphere that everybody kept saying about H.P. Lovecraft and that kind of, his kind of stories. So then I switched to Horror Babble, um, which uh, is on YouTube for free and it's really good narration of H.P. Lovecraft's stories and I listened to them instead of actually physically reading it and I found it increased so much better. As soon as I switched over to the um, audio it was just almost instantaneously how different you kind of process them and find them interesting for sure. Um, I gave it three stars mainly because like all short story collections are hit and misses and I kind of, I liked quite a few of them, uh, including The Call of Cthulhu, The Shadow Over Innsmouth, New Music of Eric Sam, and The Silver Key, and a couple of other ones. Um, but a couple of them were also a bit, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. And next up was The Lost Hero by Rick Rorden. So, last year I read the Percy Jackson books for the first time, and I really liked them. I thought they were very very fun and so I aimed to read the rest of them by some point so I only have the first one right now I'm going to get the second one and the rest of them soon and um, but this was the first one I gave it four stars it was really fun though I am very hooked line and sinker almost looking forward to the next one I like the three new characters trio that they're focusing on this time but I do like that it was playing with the differences between the Roman and the Greek gods and how that manifested in their children. Yeah. Next up, I read The Italian by Anne Radcliffe. Um, so The Italian is essentially about a, a young man trying to marry a young woman and then a monk, no, not monk, uh, kind of a fat, what do you call them? Priest trying to... Um, stop them getting married and kind of doing everything in his power they can not for any real reason other than just to cause a problem because who doesn't just love a problem solving bad guy um and the main character in this the boy is so is such a twink like oh my god he faints and collapses everywhere he goes and then the poor girl is just standing there like what is going on i'm so confused and then the priest guy comes up and goes, oh, you shouldn't marry him. 
let's just take you away to a convent instead and kidnaps her and puts her in a convent and then he comes back out of a convent and then they get arrested for the Spanish Inquisition or the Catholic Inquisition. I don't actually know any of the history behind this so that probably didn't help. Um, but it was very confusing and I ended up giving it three stars even though I'd like powered through it in a couple of days but it's junk. Next up was The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. So if anyone knows me, they know that I love Wilkie Collins as an author and that I've had The Moonstone on my shelf for such a long time. But the main reason that I didn't, haven't read it by now is because I was so nervous that I wasn't going to like it for some reason. I was like, oh, I really like all of his other books. Let's just put this one off and never read it so that I won't not like it. But I ended up loving it. I gave it five stars. Once again, Wilkie Collins nailed it. Um, I didn't like it as much as The Woman in White or Frozen Deep, but it was still very good. Um, it definitely were brought, like the characters were very, very vivid. Like I find that by a lot of Wilkie Collins' characters is they're very, very vivid and real and you can just imagine them being right in front of you. You can see what they look like, how they act, that kind of thing. And it's just absolutely sublime the way he does that. Uh, in particular, the butler, groundskeeper guy thing that was in the first, that narrated the first half of it and the religious wifey who was in the second half of it um, who was objectively annoying as anything trying to convert people to her religion but um, but everyone else realises she's annoying but she can't quite see it so and it's just it's absolutely brilliant that we did it the plot was interesting and definitely kept you on the edge of your seat um, it was I would say that it wasn't too surprising what happened, but like anything, this was like the first of its kind, kind of sensational novel, and it definitely had you keeping turning the pages to find out what happened even more. Hi. Up next is The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. Now, I didn't like this one, I'm going to say that right off the bat. One star for this one. And it was purely because I have no sympathy for men who ruin lives by having affairs. That's all I will say. Don't. Not a fan. Um, next up was The Library of the Unwritten by A.G. Hackwith. Um, this one I gave three stars. I enjoyed it, fair enough. It wasn't brilliant, it wasn't awful. However, um, I do feel like I would have enjoyed this a lot more a couple of years ago. So since like I used to really like stories about angels and demons and that kind of different interdimensional world hell heaven that kind of thing but I don't really like them anymore don't really feel like everything I've read has kind of made me kind of sick to death of them so although this put a really nice spin on it and I really like the idea of the concept of the library and the way it worked and the characters I did find it dragging a bit at times because of that uh, I did really like this section that they were in Valhalla. I found that one was really pleasant, but on the whole, I mean, if you like the kind of that kind of stuff, then I think you'd enjoy it. I just didn't really, it wasn't really for me right now. Okie dokie. And then there was The Alienist by Caleb Carr. So The Alienist, I watched a TV programme when it came out uh, in last couple of years ago. Can't remember what it was. The first series. I didn't really watch the first, second series, but who knows well if I'll do that or not um, and I was really really enjoying it up until like the last episode or the second last episode I can't remember which one it is um, when something happens and I'm not going to spoil it so don't worry but I'll just say that my favourite character in the TV show was Mary and Laszlo and how they interacted with each other and that kind of thing that's why I picked up this book to find more of that kind of interaction and content however this book is entirely from the point of view of John. So you see Mary like four times physically in the book and then she's mentioned a couple of times after that, which is extremely disappointing. And I feel like the story loses a lot of what it had by being first person from John's point of view. Um, and I just felt like the TV show was such a good adaption of this book that I actually built upon it and made it better. Um, maybe I probably wouldn't have found it so bad if I'd read the book first before I'd watched the TV programme but because I watched the TV programme first and then I came to this it kind of brought it down so I gave this one three stars. 
and then I read Erebus by Michael Palin and I loved this one. I gave it five stars. It was probably one of my favourite of the month. Um, so it essentially is about the HMS Erebus and to a lesser extent the HMS Terror and about the history of the ship, uh, how it was built, where it went to and then eventually what took it to the Franklin Expedition of uh, 14, uh, 1848 and how it ended up there and how it wasn't even found until 2014 after it went missing. I adore stories, mysteries about what happened ages ago that only people recently solved because of like techniques and um, knowing more about it and I just absolutely love these kind of stories and I loved how whimsical Michael Palin's writing was especially for this subject and you know that how it was just devastating to lose all these men but also the things that they did before they died uh, like discovered parts of the south pole and then the north pole and all these kind of different things and it was just very interesting so i would definitely highly recommend this one so the next two books i'm going to be talking about i'm going to talk about all in one go because i didn't like either of them and i read them at the same time so it was we by Zamatin and The Monk by Matthew Gregory Lewis. I read this one physically and I listened to this one on audiobook and I didn't like either of them. I gave them both one stars and it was for different reasons. So We was essentially dystopian. I think it may have been like the pioneer of the genre or that kind of thing. Um, but it was just awful. <laughs> okay, I went on Goodreads and like everyone gave it like four or five stars and I was like I cannot understand what you're getting out of this it's just the language is just dense sexist racist it's full of like nonsense like the the writer goes on like spiels about mathematical terms like parabolic angles and um, imaginary numbers which as someone who kind of has to deal with them herself I just don't understand what's going on makes no sense to me whatsoever and um, I just uh, don't like it. And then The Monk by Matthew Gregory Lewis is essentially just about a monk who wants to uh, rape and murder his niece. So that's fun. I'm not going to say anything more about that because I'm not a fan. Zero out of ten. And then the last thing I read was a novella by Wilkie Collins and Charles Dickens. And that was The Lazy Tour of Two Idol Apprentices. This is part of the 101 pages Alma Classics range, which are essentially just short novellas. Very pretty. And um, so under the pseudonym of Francis Goodchild and Thomas Idol, uh, Wilkie Collins and Charles Dickens took a holiday to the north of England and then wrote back to the magazines short stories about adventures they had and that sort of thing. And it, it was really fun. But you could tell where Charles Dickens was writing and where Wilkie Collins was writing because I find Charles Dickens writing really, really dense and I struggled to get through it. Whereas Wilkie Collins was a bit more the way Wilkie Collins is and I enjoyed his bits more. Um, so I gave this one three stars mainly because of the differences between the two writers. But how fun it was to watch them bicker because you could tell that they're friends because of the way that they like bicker at each other. Hilarious. So that's a... Uh, my books for March. Um, I definitely read quite a lot um, but my favourite was probably Erebus by Michael Palin and my least favourite has got to be one of those the classics that I read so like The Age of Innocence, We Are, The Monk. Neither of them hit right with me whatsoever and I would, wouldn't recommend reading them though also I wouldn't not recommend buying classics before you know what they're about <laughs> because that's what I did for all three of them. Um, but other than that, uh, thank you for sticking with me to the end. I have got a lot of things planned for this channel, including some ideas for videos that I'm going to do in the future. And if you've read any of the books that I've talked about today, then leave a comment down below to, about what you think of them. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.